It's Mrs. McKelvey back with the next story from 13 Alabama Ghosts and Jeffrey. But before we get to today's story, I wanted to ask you about the challenge from yesterday. Were you able to find out what a scuppernong is? A scuppernong is a kind of a grape and it grows on a vine. It used to be very common in the South. Now it's not so common anymore, but there are a few places where it still grows wild. Well, I hope you had a great time trying to figure out what a scuppernong is and finding out some other interesting fruits that maybe you've never heard of before. And now maybe you have some things that you'd like to try someday. Well, today's story is one of my favorites from 13 Alabama Ghosts. It's one that I remember reading when I was a little girl and the story has stuck with me all this time. It's called, The Hole That Will Not Stay Filled. Nobody has ever actually seen the ghost of Bill Skeeto, but people going along the road from Newton, near where the old bridge crossed the Choctawahatchee River, can tell that the ghost has been there. Invariably, the hole under the tree where Skeeto was hanged is clean, as clean as if a brush broom or a pine top had swept it out. Even if the hole is heaped high with dirt every day, the dirt disappears during the night, and the next morning the hole is there again. Bill Skeeto, whose ghost apparently keeps the hole cleaned out, was born in Madrid, Spain on June 8th. 1818. When he was a little lad, he came with his father to Dale County and settled near Newton, a small town in the Wiregrass section of Alabama. There were not many Spaniards in that part of the country, and some people were suspicious of foreigners. But Bill was a good boy who won the respect of his neighbors, and when he grew up, he became a Methodist minister. After he entered the ministry, Skeeto became known as the Bible reading preacher from Spain, and he was invited to preach at churches throughout the area. He was made pastor of a log cabin Methodist church at Newton, and he was a kind pastor as well as a powerful preacher. It was while he was preaching at Newton that he met and married an attractive girl, and they built a home in the community. When the Civil War began in 1861, Skeeto was one of the first men from his county to join the Confederate Army. He fought bravely for three years, being in the thick of many battles and miraculously escaping serious injury. Then, in the fall of 1864, he received a message that his wife was very sick. Having come from a country so far away from Alabama, Skeeto had no relatives to turn to for help. His wife did not have any close relatives either. So Skeeto decided that the only thing he could do was to hire a substitute to take his place in the army so that he could go home and take care of his wife. It was not at all unusual for Confederate soldiers to pay other men to fight in their places during times of personal emergencies. The asking price for substitutes was about $1,000, a lot of money for a rural Methodist minister turned soldier, but Skeeto somehow managed to scrape up the needed cash. As soon as his substitute reported for duty, Skeeto jumped on his horse and headed for Newton, making the trip back home in near record time. His wife was so glad to see her husband and so relieved to have him home that she began to improve immediately. However, her long illness had left her weak and frail, and Skeeto felt he needed to stay with her until she regained her strength. The threat of defeat hung heavily over the South in 1864, and the Confederacy was in desperate need of every soldier it could get. Under these circumstances, Skeeto's prolonged stay at home began to arouse some resentment and suspicion. A few of his neighbors who knew Skeeto was a foreigner began to wonder if he might not be a traitor as well. At 
Newton, there were a number of men who had organized themselves to round up and punish deserters. They called themselves Captain Breer's Home Guard. The guard heard about Skeeto's return from the army and they jumped to the conclusion that he was a traitor. So they laid plans to ambush him and give him a deserter's punishment. On the evening of December 3rd, 1864, members of the home guard gathered at the foot of the bridge on the west side of the Choctahatchee River to waylay their victim. When Skeeto appeared, two men engaged him in conversation, an apparent gesture of friendship, which Skeeto responded to gratefully. He answered their questions about his wife's health and even showed them the medicine he had gone to town to purchase for her. As they talked, the other men who had been hiding in a thicket of huckleberry bushes crept up behind Skeeto and slipped a noose of new rope around his neck. Skeeto was a big, strong man, but he was treacherously surprised. Although he struggled valiantly to escape, it was to no purpose. His arms were pinioned to his back by a tight cord and his feet were tied together. Then his captors shoved him, shoved him to the ground and took turns kicking him as they forced him to try to crawl in the deep sand. Tiring of this sport and wishing to get on with the punishment they had planned, the members of the military court threw Skeeto into a buggy and maneuvered the vehicle to a spot underneath a stout limb jutting out the south side of a big post oak tree. This was to be Skeeto's hanging tree. At this time, Wesley Dowling, who knew and admired Skeeto, came down the road. When he saw what was happening, he stopped and began to beg the home guard to give their captive a fair trial. Instead of accepting this plea, one of the men gave Wesley a hard cuff and threatened to hang him too if he interfered further. Alarmed lest other passerbys should see what they were up to, the men of the guard hastened their preparation for Skeeto's hanging. They threw the rope over the limb and then asked Skeeto if he had any last words. He replied that he would like to pray. This answer made the men a little uneasy, but how could they refuse to let a man have a final prayer, particularly if the man was a preacher? So they granted this request. But instead of praying for himself as they had expected, Skeeto prayed for his tormentors. Forgive them, dear Lord, forgive them, he prayed. This prayer so infuriated the home guard that even before the doomed man had finished praying, Captain Breer gave a sharp lash of his whip to the rear of the red horse hitched to the buggy. The frightened animal plunged forward, jerking Skeeto out of the buggy. Skeeto's neck should have been broken, but in making their hurried plans for the hanging, the home guard members had not thought about their victim's height and size. Skeeto was tall and his frame was not spare. So the limb to which the rope was tied bent under Skeeto's weight and his toes touched the ground. Quickly, George Eccles, a cripple, grabbed his crutch and used it to dig a hole in the sandy soil right under Skeeto's feet so that his toes would no longer touch the ground and his body would swing from the rope. The noose tightened and did its deadly work. News of what was happening near the bridge reached Newton too late for friends to save the minister's life, but several men went to the spot, took Skeeto's body down from the tree and laid it out in a cotton house across the road. He was later buried in the graveyard at Mount Carmel Church where his tombstone can still be seen today. But the story of Bill Skeeto did not end with his burial. The six men who had hanged Skeeto were never able to sleep peacefully at night after that. And not one of them would ever again walk alone outside after dark. Though they locked their doors and barred their windows, they were tormented by a nameless dread and fear and each one in turn met a violent death. One was killed on horseback 
when a limb from a post oak tree, the same kind of tree on which Skeeto was hung, fell on him. It was a still day without a breath of wind stirring, but the heavy limb fell just as the rider passed beneath the tree. Another member of the lynch party was killed when thrown from a runaway mule that unaccountably took a fright on a quiet, open stretch of road. A third member of the group was struck by lightning, and one was found dead in a deep swamp. The other two also met their deaths in mysterious ways. Almost immediately after the hanging, curious people began visiting the site of the tragedy. As time went by, they observed that the hole dug by the crutch did not fill up as an ordinary hole would have done, and there were whisperings that Skeeto's ghost was returning to the spot to keep the hole clean. Some years later, two men who were part of the crew building a new bridge over the river decided to camp on the spot where Skeeto had died. They did not believe in ghosts, so they filled up the hole, pitched their tent over it, and the braver of the two men put his bedroll directly over the fresh-filled hole. They spent a fairly comfortable night. The next morning when they broke the camp, the braver man picked up his bedroll and found to his amazement that the hole was there again, although he had filled it up himself and had lain on it all night long. The hanging oak is not there anymore, but the hole is. It's about 30 inches wide at the top and slopes to a depth of about eight inches. Three young pine trees now grow close to the hole but even their needles do not remain in it. Something sweeps them away, leaving the hole as clean and as empty as it was on the day an innocent man was hanged there. And that's the end of the story. I did a little looking online to see if I could find a picture of the hole that would not stay filled. And I found out that actually a new modern bridge has been built there. It was built in the year 1990. And as a part of building that bridge, they covered the all underneath that area with big, huge rocks. And so now they say you can't tell where Bill Skeeto's hole is. But there is a story I heard that some of the planners and the engineers who were building that bridge wanted to respect the hole of Bill Skeeto. And so they actually covered it with rocks, but didn't fill in the hole. They covered it so that the rocks would go on top, but still leave an open spot. Sounds like a really amazing thing to happen, but I don't know if it's true or not. I have another challenge for you today though. So today's challenge has to do with the amount of money that Bill Skeeto paid to have someone go and fight in his place in the army. Do you remember how much money he paid? He paid $1,000. And I did some research on that as well. And did you know that there used to be a thousand dollar bill? It was pretty common in the time of the Civil War. They had a lot of thousand dollar bills and then they discontinued its use. So I think it would be really interesting if you got online and did some research about the thousand dollar bill. Whose picture was on the front and what was on the back? And then see if you can find out when they quit using the thousand dollar bill and what did they do with all those thousand dollar bills? Because they actually collect them. So see if you can find out what happens when all the thousand dollar bills are collected by the treasury. Well, that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.